Okay, problem 2.9. Problem 2.9 reads, suppose the electric field in some region is found to be E equals K R cube R hat in spherical coordinates, where K is some constant. So from this problem, we are asked to number letter A, find the charge density rho. And letter B, find the total charge contained in the sphere of radius R centered at the origin. And we will do this in two different ways. Okay? So when you discuss your, uh, when you uh, uh, discuss the Gauss law in your uh, physics two class or elect, uh, your university physics in electro, uh, electricity and magnetism, we usually express electric field as a, fun as a constant or sometimes it can be a function of R. But usually we use a Cartesian coordinate system. In this case, we're given with an electric field in spherical coordinates. Okay, so first thing is that we need to understand here is the nature of your electric field. You will see that the electric field is only directed in one coordinate, and that is your R coordinate. So what does it mean? It means that the electric field points rigidly outward and it varies with R cube. So in other words, the electric field has only one component, and that is E R. And that E R is a function of R. So this is your electric field. This is very important because when we deal with uh, curvilinear coordinate systems, spherical and cylindrical, uh, it helps a lot if you know the components of your vectors so that when you apply your gradient, your, uh, your curl, your divergence, or even your Laplacian, okay, uh, by knowing this relationship or this uh, simplification, we can simplify those operations, which I'm going to discuss with you or demonstrate to you later. Okay, so let's start with letter A. We want to find charge density rho. Okay, now we know from Gauss law, in the, in the, uh, integral, law, uh, the integral form of Gauss law is that the closed integral of the electric flux over a Gaussian surface is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught, where Q enclosed is the charge enclosed by your Gaussian surface. This is your integral form. And by using divergence theorem, we, we express this uh, integral form of Gauss law into its uh, differential form, where in the resulting differential form states that the divergence of the electric field is just equal to the charge density divided by the permittivity of free space epsilon naught. Okay, so here we're given with the electric field E, and we want to find the charge density. Okay, using Gauss law in its differential form, we can actually do that. So letter A, the charge density can be determined from the divergence of your electric field. Because remember, when we, uh, when we discuss the divergence, the geometric interpretation of divergence, if the divergence in some region is positive, there must be the, a source. Okay, so if this is non-zero, therefore, there must be a charge density, the source or sink of that electric field. And that is what we're going to do here. From the electric field, we can determine that source of, or of your electric field. So in this case, rho is now equal to epsilon naught times the divergence of the electric field. Now in spherical coordinate system, the divergence can be calculated as follows. This is now, we're going to write the complete form of the divergence of a vector 
in spherical coordinate system, you now have one over R squared. You can check your notes. P times the derivative with respect to R of the product of R squared times the R components of your vector plus one over R sine theta times the derivative with respect to theta of the product of sine theta times all n the theta component of your uh, of your vector in this case our electric field plus one over r sine theta times the derivative of the phi component of your electric field with respect to phi so as i mentioned before the electric field has only one component, and that's along R component. So that means the theta component and the phi component is zero. So we don't need to do the uh, derivative in the uh, uh, in here in the second and the third term. Okay, so we can just do this derivative. Okay, doing this electric uh, derivative, we now have raw now equal to epsilon naught times uh, 1 over r squared times the derivative with respect to r of r squared times er, which is k r cubed. So in this case, this becomes r uh, k r to the fifth. Okay, and the end result would be rho will now be equal to uh, k epsilon naught. times five, times r to the fourth divided by r squared. So that's r squared. So in this case, so the final form would be five k epsilon naught r squared. So this is now your density. As you will notice that the density or the charge density rho varies with r squared so this is now your result okay questions okay now we now have a charge density rho so therefore we can now calculate the total charge contained in a sphere of radius r by just taking the, the volume integral of your uh, differential element charge dq. So method one. So let's start with the first method. Method one means the total charge q will just be the integral of the infinitesimal element dq. Okay, which is equal to the volume integral of rho theta. So you will notice that uh, you cannot take out your rho from uh, out of this integral because rho is not constant. In fact, rho is a function of r. So if we're going to expand this, uh, this term, we now have the integral of rho, which is 5 k epsilon naught r squared times d tau in spherical coordinate system. That's why we started our term with discussion of spherical coordinates and cylindrical coordinate system. And we already know that the volume element of your in spherical coordinate system is given by r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. So this is now a triple integral. Okay, so we can calculate that as follows. Q is now equal to 5 k epsilon times the integral of 
r squared times r squared, so that's r to the fourth, dr. And then the limit would be from zero, which is free origin, to reduce r. And then the second integral would be sine theta d theta. And then because this is a whole sphere, this is from 0 to pi. And then we integrate the last uh, element, that's d phi, and the range is from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, this integral sine theta d theta integrated from 0 to pi is just equal to 2. And then this integral of d phi integrated from 0 to 2 pi is 2 pi. So this is 2 pi. And this integral would be r to the fifth over r, uh, over 5. So that 5 will cancel with 5. So that becomes So this becomes 5 k epsilon naught times r to the fifth over 5 times 2 times 2 pi. So this is now equal to 4 pi epsilon naught k r to the fifth. This is now the result. So that's the first method. We in just integrate your uh, uh, element charge dq. Okay. Second method, method two. In this case, we're going to use Gauss law in integral form. We're in. We're going to calculate the total charge Q enclosed by this Gaussian surface, taking this integral and then multiplying it with epsilon, and see whether we indeed will come. Uh, will get the same charge. Okay. So from this equation, we now have Q. Now have Q. Q will now be epsilon naught times the integral, close integral of E dot dA. Okay, because of spherical symmetry, because remember when we solve this, we use a spherical Gaussian surface to indicate how to simplify this integral. In other words, this equation becomes epsilon naught times E times A. Because the Gaussian surface is asymmetrical to your uh, area elements. Okay. And what is this electric field? Electric field will now be kr cubed. Remember, this is just your magnitude. And this is now k r cubed. And then the area, in this case, sorry, uh, the, in this case, this should be capital R because we're looking at the radius R. And then the area of your sphere is 4 pi r squared. Simplifying this, we have 4 pi epsilon k r to the fifth, which is the same as this one. 